this workshop, this um, educator's workshop, was born uh, three, four years ago. Um, I've always, as an educator, kind of grappled with this whole idea of bullying. And, you know, obviously, um, educators in all over the world have been innovative and come up with, you know, program after program after program to deal with bullying. And some are successful and some are not successful. However, um, we all know as educators that bullying continues to be an issue. Um, and I believe that, you know, when you kind of peel off the layers, well, what's underneath bullying? Um, and lots of research has been done about that. You know, what's underneath bullying is often um, the, the bully's lack of sense of self-worth, the bully themselves has perhaps been bullied, has perhaps been abused, and they don't feel like a good person. They have not been treated well, and so they don't know other ways to treat. That's on one end of things. But you go even deeper. So why, why is this happening in our world? Well, I feel like, you know, with the racism that is rampant in our country and other parts of the world right now, there is this habit of othering. There is this habit of one-upmanship. There is this habit of um, the, what's the old phrase? Uh, the um, whoever is best wins, okay? The, the, um, the old um, biological, uh, I'm losing the, the, the phrase, the war of the fittest. Um, so, so we have this subconscious, unconscious, ancient, ancient um, idea that I've got to be better than. And, you know, I always come back to, well, we aren't, we aren't out in the woods fighting dinosaurs anymore. We're not out in the woods fighting off prehistoric animals. So there are certain things that can evolve. And I feel like as educators, that's where we come in. So, so what is anti-bullying has to be pro-something. It has to be teaching what the opposite of that is. And, you know, when kids think bullying is cool, it's really hard to convince them that kindness is cool. So that's the background to where I'm coming from. I'm going to bring up the PowerPoint, and that's not what we need to see just yet. Okay, so we're going to go, we're going to try this. I think I know how it works now. Um, so first slide, and, and, and just to reiterate, everyone will get this PowerPoint in a, a PDF later on this afternoon. This is just um, my bio, which is pretty much what I just presented to you, and it's you don't need to hear me read it anyway. But so now looking at teaching that kindness is cool. Um, you know, educators, depending on when we did our training, um, there was all kinds of research that goes back and forth about that kindness and compassion can't be taught, that some kids are just a lost cause. You know, they just, you can't teach them. And as far as I'm concerned, that is total nonsense. Okay? Um, and if, even if you think that, it doesn't give you a pass to give up on a kid, ever. Um, <clears throat> so that's my starting point. And um, I'm very stubborn. So I, I, I tend to be really annoying when I am faced with someone who's a, who's a good challenge because I want to really love that kid and I want to really give them um, that, that oomph that can can help them possibly consider things in a different way. So um, we all are doing lots of learning these days about social emotional learning and how incredibly important that is in all learning and that it is a puzzle piece that cannot be overlooked, that cannot be ignored. Um, the third bullet point here, Everyone learns better and more easily in spaces where there is kindness, safety, collaboration, and inclusion. And I want to I wanna identify safety there, okay? When, when a person doesn't feel safe, their entire being 
is caught up in trying to stay safe. And so for a child who doesn't feel safe, they're not available to learn, okay? They, they can't get the, those reading, writing, arithmetic stuff that we are trying to teach them because they are caught up in not feeling safe. And in our last week's workshop, we talked about ACEs, adverse childhood experiences, um, and about, you know, the fact that just about everyone has at least one. The issue becomes when children have ongoing adverse childhood experiences and they start to shut down. So, you know, what can we do as educators to make sure that at least our classrooms are places where they feel safe? And of course, starting place is going to be their, their relationship with us as the, as the adults in the room. Um, so I'm not going to go through every bullet point here. I'm going to say read those later. Um, but jumping down to the third from the end, I should probably number these, it would be way easier. Um, but the third bullet point from the end, that compassion and kindness are pro-social behaviors, while bullying is an anti-social behavior. So again, what is it that we're doing to give kids tools, not just say don't bully, but give them those actual tools. Kindness leads to inclusion, bullying leads to exclusion. And bullying and meanness flourish in spaces where conformism and competition are a priority, okay? Um, Got to move you guys over here. Um, are prioritized and being different is a source of shame or vulnerability. And I always, you know, I always come back to being different than what, okay? <laughs> like who, who is it that determines what typical is, what the norm is? Who gets to say that? So for me, I always come back to um, how uniqueness is treasured. And bullying can't flourish in places where that is the atmosphere. It cannot grow in a place where no one is laughed at because they're different than someone else or because they're wearing something different, or their accent is different, or their, 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 um, their food is different, okay? You can't, you can't bully someone if it isn't a problem to be different, okay? If uniqueness is valued, then uniqueness is valued. So that's the basis for all of the material that I have put together for today. And, um, before we jump on, I just want to give, you know, does anybody have any, ooh, I want to say something about this. Um, I'm going to stop the share for a minute so I can see everybody. And, um, and if anybody has something like, ooh, I want to add to that, put up your hand. No hand. Oh, yes, go, Susan. <laughs> I'm kind of interested in that what how we behave influences others because when you do say you're open to inclusion you as a mother of two children with disabilities but also a teacher i've been the one in charge of children who are other and as a mother you want to say everybody's welcome but as a teacher that can be very challenging but how you behave really does inflect it molds what the children do, what you model. So I'm very interested to see what you say. <laughs> and yeah, you and Susan, I'm in the exact same boat. You know, yeah. I mean, I have often felt like, oh my God, I'm not being the teacher that I want my son to have. Um, like, you know, in the midst of like, yeah, I'm like, oh. Um, so, you know, that's why we have that we have that special mirror that is constantly in our faces as parents of someone with a disability. But I, I don't think that um, anybody who isn't the parent of someone with a disability needs that mirror. I think as humans, <laughs> we have that mirror. And yes, it is absolutely challenging. And one of the bullet points I didn't read was just like we talked about yesterday, inclusion is a stretch. Um, kindness is often a stretch, okay? We're tired, we're worried, um, Zoom and long distance teaching is making us crazy. We're human, you know, we don't all have great days. 
So, um, so how do we walk into a classroom? And as far as I'm concerned, um, some of you were here when we did uh, the workshop last week, and I have this song called It's Okay to Say No. It's okay to say not right now. It's okay to say wait. It's okay if they fall down. It's okay to have a bad day. And so it's okay for us to have a bad day. We can't take advantage of that bad day, but we can certainly say, to, and I do, you know, I do say to my kids, hey, you know what? My kids, my students, um, hey, you know what? I'm, I'm really, really tired today. So I'm going to do my best, and I'm going to ask you to do your best. Um, you know, and obviously sometimes that works, and sometimes it doesn't, because <laughs> we are human. <laughs> like, all right, so I'm going to go. Does anybody else have anything to jump in with? Go, Kim, Kimberly. So um, I am a teaching artist, and I use dance a lot. And I have always been part of some either nonprofit studio base or private studio base. And this is a roller coaster where when you introduce a uniform or um, you know, buns for ballet, that inclusion happens and you can see how it's pro-social. And then over time, if you don't keep shifting something, then it becomes, you know, completely antisocial. And the girl who needs help with her bun, you can watch and see, are people going to help her? Or are they going to belittle her about it? But I watch that as a roller coaster really and constantly have to change up how I'm doing it to keep it pro-social. That's a really good point because I've often wondered and you know there's no way I can know when I have been guilty of not seeing the antisocial. Like I can say oh I see it but of course I don't know what I don't see. Um, but you know that whole saying of teachers have eyes in the back of their head, um, we really need that. I mean, we really need that sixth sense to see what is happening when our head is turned, because that's when the antisocial behavior happens. Um, so, you know, and, and so it's just a constant process. So I really appreciate that you brought that up, because we think we've put in place the framework to be, you know, we, we've put it in place, we've planted that seed, we're off and growing. Yeah, well, there's also weeds, you know, and so so we're off and growing and we have to be constantly tending that garden. I mean, that's why, like, teachers are just the most amazing species in the world, you know? I mean, I, and like, I feel like I'm, I'm not a classroom teacher, I'm a music teacher, I come in and out, it's a very different experience. So just hats off to all of you who spend your days in classrooms and now maybe your days in front of Zoom trying to teach on Zoom, you know, it's just. So I'm gonna go to our first song. Um, and, okay, now it's, there it is. Okay, so this is, I don't, um, I don't often do piggyback songs. Um, but this is a piggyback song, and this is, can everybody see me? I know that yesterday, okay, if there's someone who can't see me, just maybe um, write in the chat. There's a, a there, um, Catherine yesterday was um, giving directions on how to make sure that you could see the PowerPoint and me. Um, so, get yourself into kid mode, get yourself into teaching mode. We are going to be make these as active as possible. This is um, called We're Going to Build a Brand New World. Um, and um, to me, this is just, you know, planting that seed of imagination for kids that, oh, things don't have to be mean. They could be a different way. So get your hands building. We're going to build. We're going to build. We're going to build a better world. Oh, brand new world. Sorry, I didn't change those lyrics, but we're going to build. We're going to build. 
We're going to build a brand new world. And just a word about that. I did originally write it as a better world. And afterwards, I was like, well, that's kind of mean. No, we're going to build a new world. I'm not going to judge whether the old one was good or bad. So brand new world. We're going to build. We're going to build. We're going to build a brand new world. We're going to build. We're going to build. We're going to build a brand new world. How are we going to do that? With our hands, with our hands. We're going to build a brand new world. With our hands, with our hands. We're going to build a brand new world. With our hearts, with our hearts. We're going to build a brand new world with our hearts, with our hearts. We're going to build a brand new world with our minds, with our minds. We're going to build a brand new world with our minds, with our minds. We're going to build a brand new world, etc., etc. And um, obviously, let's jump down to with our friends. I taught everybody how to do this yesterday. Put your hands up to the edge of your screen where you can see it. Okay, and you're going to clap hands with the person on the other end of the screen. Make sure that you can see your hands in your computer screen because that way we can see your hands too. And it's um, for somebody like me with dyslexia, it's like I'm moving the wrong hand. It just makes me crazy. It's a good brain exercise. With our friends, with our friends, we're going to build a brand new world. With our friends, with our friends, we're going to build a brand new world. And this is what is called a zipper song. So you are free to use this in any way that works in your classroom. How else would you, in your classroom, build a better world? Um, so you get the kids thinking about what else they could do, how else they can use this song. Um, I think what we'll do, just for timing, is I'm going to go through a, um, the section of songs, and then we'll take a break. So if you've got some questions, ideas, j jot them down, and um, then we'll, we'll take a quick break after that. Everybody knows the hokey pokey, okay? Well... My friend uh, Mara Sapinchevin, Dr. Mara Sapinchevin, who is a professor of inclusive education, she took the hokey pokey and she said, you put some kindness in, you take the meanness out, you put some kindness in and you stir it all about, you do the classroom pokey and we help each other out, hey that's how we build a class, okay, so build a class build a community, build a club, build a whatever. So obviously, again, you ask the kids, what, what do you want to have in our classroom? So what should we put in? What should we take out? Okay? And, you know, you get all kinds of age-appropriate answers, depending on the age of your class. <laughs> So that's when we won't we won't spend lots of time on this because I know you guys know that one. Everybody knows this one. The more we get together, 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 the more we get together, the happier we'll be. So what are the things instead of get together? What are the other things that we can do together? The more we smile together, the more we work together, the more we help each other, the more we play together. All right. The more we work out arguments, the more we discuss problems, the happier we'll be. The more we communicate, the happier we will be. Um, so just going through these guys quickly. Does that, do, do people remember this one? Um, it's a beautiful round um, that I always associate with my one year of Girl Scout camp. Um, so... Um, Make new friends, but keep the old. One is silver and the other's gold. 
A circle is round, it has no end. That's how long I want to be your friend. Now, I found this very interesting with, like, four-year-olds, because four-year-olds, I have found, go very quickly through, you're my best friend, you're not my friend. You're my best friend, you're not my friend. And somehow um, introducing to them the idea that even as friends, we have times that we don't always want to be together, but that doesn't mean we're not friends. And so, so starting to work on that language of just communication that right now I just don't want to play is different than I'm not your friend. And it, and it gets communicated to the listener in an entirely different way. So, you know, again, developmentally, it's totally normal to say I'm not your friend. However, children can learn <laughs> different ways of communication. Okay, I know I'm going quickly now, and I'm, I'm doing that um, on purpose because I just want to move to the songs that may be less well-known. Um, this song, I love, 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 and the, um, the link that I put here, I really encourage everybody to go here, um, see. It's Guy Davis, the um, musician who wrote this song. He's at a school in Spain. And um, the English teacher who has invited him, she, she's taught the kids motions um, to go with his song. And it's just a really sweet, sweet YouTube. So um, it's a, it, it, a Guy Davis is a blues musician. So this is a, an old blues song that he's added these words to. So if you got troubles and you need a helping hand if you've got troubles and you need a helping hand if you've got troubles and you need a helping hand come to me i will be your friend i will be your friend I will be your friend If you've got troubles and you need a helping hand Come to me, I will be your friend And then again, it is a zipper song So if you're hungry and you've got no place to stay If you're lonely and you've got nobody to love so again, you work with the kids to what are the ways that we can really practically, honestly help somebody else out. And we know that the children in our classes are going through all different kinds of things um, that they may not verbalize, but they may be willing to put into a song. Um, so I know that <clears throat> Often schools are not happy with language, oh lordy, and obviously that language can be problematic because we've got people of all different um, religious persuasions in our classes. So I, you know, I simply substitute those words. Um, where am I? Uh, I will be your friend. Oh yes, I will be your friend but I wanted to honor his original lyrics here so that's why I've put that up there but clearly feel free to adapt that to what you need in your classroom um, okay this is a much older song but I don't know if um, people know this um, I'm going to let me just get my note <clears throat> okay so this one has hand motions <clears throat> um, and just follow along with me um, 
Love is something if you give it away, you give it away, you give it away. Well, love is something if you give it away, you end up having more. Well, it's just like a magic penny. Hold it tight and you won't have any. But lend it, spend it, and you'll have so many. They'll roll all over the floor. For love is something if you give it away, you give it away, you give it away. Well, love is something if you give it away, you end up having more. So that concept of, you know, love is not... And friendship is not this thing that has a quantifying layer that I only have a little to give away. No, it's endless. And when you actually do be a friendly, loving person, that is what's going to come back. Okay? Which is a tricky concept for young children and obviously for many adults. <laughs> so, um, okay. So this is another um, song, same, same idea. Um, I'm actually going to play. Now, what I do with this song, Carol Johnson, um, another person to look up her music. Unfortunately, she, she just passed away. She was um, a Michigan musician. Beautiful music. Um, and you can find a lot of it um, online. This song especially has been used many, many times. Um, I just want to, so part of it is, um, um, part of it is also hand motions. And I, with younger children, um, I usually just use the chorus. Um, but, you know, as kids get older, they are certainly able to understand the, the verses as well. Um, and I'm sure, you know, you guys can think of ways to use oops sorry <laughs> there we go alrighty so um, love so love grows one by one two by two and four by four love grows round like a circle and comes back knocking on my front door well, note by note we make a song, voice by voice we sing it. Choir by choir we fill up the world with the music that we bring it. So sing along with me. Love grows one by one, two by two, and four by four. Love grows round in a circle and comes back knocking on my front door. So let me take your hand, my friend. We'll each take the hand of another. One by one we'll reach for all, our sisters and our brothers. Cause love grows one by one, two by two, and four by four. Love grows round in a circle and comes back knocking on my front door. So again, very much that idea that the more loving I am, the more love I am going to experience which I know is a problematic um, idea in the reality of our world sometimes. Um, so <clears throat> this is another one to do with, uh, also by Carol Johnson. This one, unfortunately, I could not find any recordings of. Um, but I do have, if anybody is a sheet music person, I do have her, um, her book, and I can recommend her book. So uh, I, I think it's in the resources at the end of the PowerPoint. Um, so 
Um, a, another wonderful one to teach with sign language. Um, we're going to do the sign for light and then the sign for truth and then the sign for love and the sign for healing which starts with your hands on your chest and then you pull them out to strong fists okay um, and this one as well there's um, there's a verse which I have generally not used with younger children and I just use with kind of K and up so not with preschoolers um, but it goes like this oh what's my note um, I've got okay so I've got some of the light in me you've got some of the light in you and a little bit of light from everyone is enough to see us through. I've got some of the truth in me. You've got some of the truth in you. And a little bit of truth from everyone. A little bit of light from everyone is enough to see us through. I've got some of the love in me, you've got some of the love in you, and a little bit of love from everyone, a little bit of truth from everyone, a little bit of light from everyone is enough to see us through. There is nobody with a handle on it all. No one place the answers can be found. But everyone has a gift and everyone can share. Put us all together and we can heal things everywhere. I've got some of the light in me. You've got some of the light in you. And a little bit of light from everyone is enough to see us through. I've got some of the truth in me. You've got some of the truth in you. And a little bit of truth from everyone. A little bit of light from everyone is enough to see us through. I've got some of the love in me, you've got some of the love in you. And a little bit of love from everyone, a little bit of truth from everyone, and a little bit of light from everyone is enough to see us through. So again, the point of the song is very much sorry <laughs> feet feet here um is very much um e uh, expressing to children that idea of i don't have it all so so other people have qualities and values that maybe i'm not able to see real easily and maybe i need to take some time to think about that um, all of these songs, for me, <laughs> are conversation starters with children. They're, uh, so, you know, you sing the song, and then, so what do you think about that? And you get a conversation going. Um, this is um, one of my songs, and again, um, it's done with... Let me just, it's done with sign language. Let me just get my cord. There we go. Okay. Um, so, the words that are underlined are the words that we're going to be doing in American Sign Language, and everything else I call just hand dancing. So it's not official sign language. And um, the, the second YouTube that's listed in your handout is... Um, a video of me doing the song with the hand motions so you can actually have that reinforcement if you want to use it so the sign of for caring 
is two peace signs glued to each other going around. Um, the sign for kindness is this figure with my hand over my heart, okay? The sign for sharing is one hand like this and the other hand going towards me and away from me. Um, the sign for friendship is two fingers. The sign for healing, we just did that in the previous song. So I start with my open hands and I bring them out strong. And then the sign for peace is two hands together back and forth, okay? So those are the official ASL signs in here. And like I said, the rest of it is hand dancing. <clears throat> and if you uh, come up with a way that's clearer for your class, obviously do that. So. Gonna find a seed of caring and plant it in a garden. Gonna water it well and let it grow. And as the seasons pass, that seed will root and flower, yielding bushels of kindness for all to behold. Gonna find a seed of kindness and plant it in a garden. Gonna water it well and let it grow. And as the seasons pass, that seed will root and flower, yielding bushels of sharing for all to behold. So as soon as you get the melody, sing along at home and you can harmonize, you can make mistakes, no one's going to hear, no one's going to care. It's gonna find a seed of sharing and plant it in a garden. Gonna water it well and let it grow. And as the seasons pass, that seed will root and flower, yielding bushels of friendship for all to behold. This garden full of kindness, friendship, and care will slowly spread and fill the world, bringing healing everywhere. Gonna find a seed of friendship and plant it in a garden. Gonna water it well and let it grow. And as the seasons pass, that seed will root and flower, yielding bushels of peace for all to behold. This garden full of kindness, friendship, and care will slowly spread and fill the world, bringing healing everywhere bringing healing everywhere. So um, with preschoolers, <clears throat> I do um, all of the motions, but of course I don't assume that they are going to be able to follow all of the motions until we've done it many, many, many times. Um, for older kids, I find that the um, motions really help them uh, internalize the lyrics. I, I find that motions to songs do that in general. Um, okay, so we all know this term, don't judge a book by its cover. Um, <clears throat> and, and please make sure you're making notes of questions, of ideas that you can share. We've got um, just this song and the next one, and then we're going to take a, a comment break. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, this is a very, very old uh, ethic. 
um, that is can be found in just about every ancient religion, uh, this idea of don't judge a book by its cover. Mm. But of course, we as humans are extremely quick to, to judge. <laughs> so um, the X's in the lyrics are claps, okay? And initially, um, I'm inviting the children just to clap along when my guitar goes bonk, bonk. Um, and then I kind of mix it up and I invite them to stomp their feet then. And when it seems like the time, I invite them to turn to a friend and to patty cake with their friend, um, always in that same place, okay? So um, feel free to clap along with my guitar bonks. Well, don't judge a book by its cover. The cover doesn't tell you what's inside. To know what's inside, you gotta open it and read it with your very own eyes. Well, the cover might be fancy, the cover might be plain. Doesn't tell you nothing, you know what I'm saying. Don't judge a book by its cover. The cover doesn't tell you what's inside. No matter, blah, 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 to know what's inside, you gotta open it and read it with your very own eyes. Well, no matter what the cover, the inside might be fine. Good for your soul, good for your mind. Don't judge a book by its cover. The cover doesn't tell you what's inside. To know what's inside, you gotta open it. <coughs> read it with your very own eyes. Well, people are like books. You don't know who they are till you listen with your ears and see with your heart. Don't judge a book by its cover. The cover doesn't tell you what's inside. To know what's inside, you gotta open it and read it with your very own eyes. Well, clothes and hair and skin won't tell you what they're like. When you look past those things, you'll find a special sight. Don't judge a book by its cover. The cover doesn't tell you what's inside. To know what's inside, you gotta open it and read it with your very own eyes. Yes, read it with your very own eyes. Read it with your very own eyes. Um, so, very direct message. <laughs> All right, this is an old song. Old song. <laughs> this song is from the 80s, <laughs> which at this point is 40 years ago. <laughs> so, like, um, but um, Jan Negro is an amazing musician from upstate New York, from Ithaca, and he's got a lot of great songs. This is one that, another one about um, that whole phrase that is um, uh, thought to be a Native American, Native American phrase of um, don't judge another human before you've walked a mile in their moccasins. Um, and so Jan took that phrase and turned this into, and this is another, um, I always do this as a mixer, as a dance. Um, in general, whenever I can invite children to get up and move um, while I'm teaching them a song, at least initially, I'm always inviting them to move. And I'm always looking for ways to add, um, some specific movement to specific lyrics so that they can be listening while they're moving. Um, <clears throat> so this one is another one where it's got a clapping part and um, in general, pre-COVID, post-COVID, I invite kids to patty cake on that part. Um, it goes like this. I wanna walk, sorry, I wanna walk a mile in your shoes. I want to walk a mile. No, I'm totally singing it wrong. I'm going to start again. I want to walk a mile in your shoes. I want to walk a mile in your shoes. I want to know what you think and what you feel. So I really want to walk 
a mile in your shoes. Remember that fight that we had? Why did we both have to lose? It's because we both walked away mad. Instead of walking a mile in each other's shoes, I want to walk a mile in your shoes. I want to walk a mile in your shoes. want to know what you think and what you feel, so I really want to walk a mile in your shoes. You hear how the world is a mess whenever you turn on the news. All countries could have happiness if they'd be walking a mile in each other's shoes. I want to walk a mile in your shoes. I want to walk a mile in your shoes. I want to know what you think and what you feel. So I really want to walk a mile in your shoes. Tempers start to cool down. A frown turns into a smile. Anger cannot be found. When you walk in their shoes and walk in that mile, I want to walk a mile in your shoes. I want to walk a mile in your shoes. I want to know what you think and what you feel. So I really want to walk a mile in your shoes. And the video that I've um, linked to is actually a video that has a story to it. And it's um, it's about high school kids, but it's definitely appropriate for younger kids to watch as well. So um, I'm going to stop the share now. And I see something in the chat. Um, OK, Tara, I don't know which one you were talking about, but I'm glad you liked it. <laughs> um, so did anybody have any questions, any thoughts, any ideas of a way to use um, a song that I didn't present, but you went like, oh, cool, I could do this, um, that they would like to share with each other. Anyone? No one? <laughs> and that's okay, too. We can keep on moving. Should we keep on moving? Keep on moving. Okay, cool. So, um, the next thing that I want to present are singing games. Um, <clears throat> I'm sure many of you use singing games. Um, you know, and as a music teacher, again, for me, um, this also harkens back to last week's workshop about um, invisible disabilities. Um, you know, in terms of music, the the classical concert hall expected behavior does not work for everyone. Um, sitting quietly, politely in fancy clothes and tight shoes and listening to beautiful music doesn't work for everyone. I know for myself as a musician, I immediately move um, whatever the music is. I am immediately responding physically because that's how I learn and that's how I respond to music. So. I will never forget my dismay <laughs> when I moved to this country. Um, for those of you who I, you know, shared this in another workshop, I um, began my adult career and my teaching career in Israel and um, moved to this country in 1998 and my daughter was five and she we had to choose a kindergarten. We got here in the summer. We had to choose a kindergarten. So we're choosing, you know, out of a book of Columbus Public Schools. And we chose Duxbury Arts um, Integration School, which was a phenomenal school. And um, we, and she was going into kindergarten. She was like musical and artsy. And she's now a professional actor, you know, so she's a theater person. She stayed with that. Um, but they brought in, um, some of you Columbus people might remember this band. I don't know if they still exa exist, um, Yumbambe. So Eric the Fishes band. Molly, do they still perform? 
I haven't I haven't seen them for a while, but this amazing salsa band, incredible. Now I don't know about you guys, but when I just hear the word salsa, my body starts to move. So this amazing salsa band is there in the gymnasium, <laughs> and the kids in an arts impact school are told to sit still, and I'm like. I can't sit still. How are you expecting these children to sit still? So, so for me, that just reinforced, if a child is responding to the music, let them respond to the music. That's probably how they can listen best. And singing games totally um, bring that out. So I want to share a bunch of singing games. Some of them you might know. Some of them you might not. This is how I use them as builders for this idea of it's cool to be kind. And the kind of the learning that goes on through singing games are, of course, developing your listening. But they're also about waiting one's turn, okay? And following the directions of a game, which we all know works in some ages with some kids and doesn't work in other ages with other kids, you know? It's being part of a community and it's also about developing patience, that whole turn-taking thing. And of course, as the educator, we need to make darn sure that every kid's going to get a turn, because otherwise, that lesson about patience is not exactly being shared. So I'm going to go back to the screen share. Um, and I, you know, I, I always want to say in these Zoom workshops, I really apologize that I'm talking so much, okay? Um, I know that I'm not modeling inclusive education by talking constantly. Um, hang on. Here we go. We're going to go forward once I find. Huh. All right. My arrows are not popping up this time. Go. Okay, so this is a very simple um, Chinese folk song, and um, in the original <laughs> a Chinese folk song, um, they're not shaking hands, which I think is actually very interesting apropos COVID and um, the, the fact that in Asian cultures, A, it's not unusual to wear a mask. Or that um, you know, people are very aware of how how much masks keep germs from being spread, and also their culture. The way you say hello is to bow; it's not to shake hands. So um, we could go back to the original lyrics during COVID, which again, you know, would would remove that shaking hand part. But I did add that in to um, to create that element of touch between kids in the classrooms that I'm working with. So this is how it goes. You're starting out walking around, and if we weren't sitting in front of our computers, I would be inviting you all to be walking around. So looking, looking, looking for, I'm letting somebody else in. Looking for a good friend, I bow to you. I shake your hand, I smile at you, I dance with you, and let's dance together, dance together, dance together, bye. And then you go on walking again, and you go and find a new friend. Um, I mentioned in yesterday's workshop that I always set up the premise ahead of time that each time we are looking for a partner, we're going to be looking for a different partner so that we are going to mix the class up. And, you know, as much as my fourth grade boys didn't like that initially, um, I do want to um, proudly say that by the end of that particular school year, the two boys who had been feuding up until December were no longer feuding and um, actually playing together at recess and um, asking for play dates, which one parent didn't allow, but that's a whole other story, and that was not the kid's fault. Um, okay. 
So again, be taking notes if there's questions or ideas you have. This is an old American folk song, a play party game, and um, it's got within it a friendship part. So you're going to pretend you're horses, you're going to pretend you're someone riding horses, and ride, mm, sorry, oh, ride away on your horses, your horses, your horses, ride away on your horses, now, whoa, 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 and that's where you stop and you turn to someone who's next to you and you smile at them and you say, now's the time to stop and say how are you on this lovely day and you give a minute or two for them to tell how they're doing then off we go oh ride away on your horses your horses your horses so of course you can be working on uh, the coordination of galloping of that movement with um, little ones who don't always get that easily um, and you've got that friendship element and again every time you say whoa 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 look around the room and find someone different to say hello to and wave at and smile at okay here we go all right this is an old um, African-American song. The story that I read about Bessie Jones was um, an African-American woman from, um, oh shoot, I'm forgetting the name of the islands. Give me a second, one second. Looking for her book. Um, All right, not finding it easily. She, um, there was a set of islands off the North Carolina coast. The Georgia and, Sea Islands? Say it again. Georgia Sea Islands. Thank you, Terry. Um, so, uh, and Bessie Jones had grown up on the Georgia Sea Islands. And um, she put together this great, great, great collection of games and play party songs called Step It Down. Um, this one, um, she said that she learned from the descendants of people who had been enslaved in, in Virginia and whose job had been to create and lay the bricks of the roads in Richmond, Virginia. and. Um, when they were laying the roads, they would be stomping on the bricks to get them to stay down in the ground. Um, and th the song developed as, um, you got to remember who, who made these roads, okay? And you've got to remember me as the person that made these roads. So it is a great song about um, African American history, American history. And for older kids, I always tell that story and tell the context. I also find it a great song in terms of, hey, remember me. Don't ignore me. Look, I'm here. Um, <clears throat> and it's a call and response song. So, and it's a dance. <laughs> so first, let's do uh, the call and response is just remember me. That's the part that um, everybody else is responding with. So it goes... Way down yonder in the brickyard, remember me. Way down yonder in the brickyard, remember me. Oh, step it, step it, step it down, remember me. Well, step it, step it, step it down, remember me. Well, find a partner, swing them round, remember me. Find a partner, swing them round, remember me. 
So what is the dance? For the first line, everybody's just walking around, okay? And after the repeat of the first line, <clears throat> I wish you could see my feet, but um, so step it down is right foot front to back, so right foot crossing over left foot, so step it, step it, then left foot, step it down, and then you just keep on crossing right foot, right foot front back, left foot front back, and then find a partner, swing them around, remember me. And then you go off, and again, each time you're finding a partner, you are choosing a different partner, okay? So, come on, cursor. There we go. <laughs> um, so this is um, a song that my friend Nancy Hershatter from Connecticut wrote. And it is, again, just a friendship dance. It's a great one for getting everybody up and moving. Um, she does this as a song at circle time. And um, <clears throat> we're going to change Tuesday morning to Friday morning because it's Friday morning. And we're going for a walk on a Friday morning, Friday morning, oh so fine. Going for a walk on a Friday morning, won't you be a friend of mine? Come for a walk on a Friday morning, Friday morning, oh so fine. Come for a walk on a Friday morning, won't to be a friend of mine. So one child gets up and they're going for a walk and they invite somebody come for a walk on a Friday morning. They invite someone to come with them. The two of them walk together and at the end of that second verse, child A sits down, child B continues and invites somebody else. Um, <clears throat> so obviously it's a great song at the beginning of the year for putting in names. So, um, uh, walking with Susan on a Friday morning, Friday morning, oh so fine. Walking with Kimberly on a Friday morning, won't you be a friend of mine? And so the teacher can call the kids in that way. There's all kinds of other things to do with this song, which I'm sure you guys have ideas. Um, I think, I think, I think, ah, yes, okay. So, um, <clears throat> this is a song that I wrote um, with the help of, um, getting rid of all this stuff over here, with the help of a fourth grade class. Um, I love fourth grade. <laughs> um, I love all the grades, but fourth grade, they're always incredibly creative. And they were a fourth grade class that just argued <laughs> all the time about anything. Um, and um, so we, you know, we were looking for ways to kind of teach ourselves uh, how to stop arguing so much. And um, they came up with all of these different opposites. Um, and I also use this as a mixer and a dance, depending on the age, for preschoolers, for the chorus. We're each a little different, all a lot the same, and we can get along. It's the name of the game. For preschoolers, we're just holding hands and twirling each other around and not throwing each other on the ground, which, of course, <clears throat> is a major accomplishment for a preschooler. Um, um, for older kids, there is a whole uh, dance that goes with it. So we're each a little different. We put out our right hand. We're all a lot the same. We put out our left hand. We grasp hands in this X, and we can get along. We turn around, and it's the name of the game. And we patty cake at the end, okay? So see if you can do those <laughs> while you're sitting at home so you get that muscle memory. Um, and, you know, I, I forgot to ask, just somebody give me a thumbs up. Is the volume too loud, too quiet? Is the guitar coming through okay? It's okay? It's not sounding garbled and strange like Zoom music? Okay. So... 
There are folks of different shapes and sizes everywhere we look. Member, we don't judge by the cover of the book. We're each a little different. We're all a lot the same and we can get along. It's the name of the game. And then you would say goodbye to that partner and you'd go walking again. Some folks have blonde hair, some have black or brown. Some wear it covered, some wear it down. Here's the dance again, you're gonna find a new partner. We're each a little different, we're all a lot the same, and we can get along. It's the name of the game. And you're gonna say goodbye and go walking. Some folks are kind of short, some are kind of tall. Some are kind of big and some are kind of small. We're each a little different, we're all a lot the same and we can get along. It's the name of the game and while our kids are saying goodbye, I'm going to the next verse. Some folks are really quiet, some are really loud. Some are shy and modest, some are very proud. We're each a little different, we're all a lot the same. And we can get along, it's the name of the game. So, next partner. Some folks are really slow, some are moving fast. Some rush to the future, some stick to the past. We're each a little different, we're all a lot the same, and we can get along. It's the name of the game. Some folks have dark brown skin, some have beige or tan. Lots of different shades of homo sapiens. We're each a little different. We're all a lot the same and we can get along. It's the name of the game. Last verse. We're all a little quirky in slightly different ways. Everyone We're all a lot the same and we can get along. It's the name of the game. So, you know, there's, um, in terms of social movements and politics, um, there's many people who say, but we're all the same. Now, I find that tricky, especially with children, because um, we're not all the same, and we don't have to all be the same, and children know that. And by coming out with this premise of, no, we're all the same, we should all get along, um, I think it's very confusing for kids, and I think it leads to this uh, subconscious bias because a child knows in looking at someone whose skin color is different than their own we're not all the same but my point is no we're not all the same nor do we have to be all the same nor is that in any way a barrier to getting along with each other so to me it's much more honest to honor what people and children are actually observing that yes we are different and so what <laughs> that is not a barrier difference is not something to push away um, so again extremely direct lyrics <laughs> and um, an invitation always to for discussion um, and and that song I always laugh every time I do it because I'm immediately 
um, remembering all the endless discussions that year with my fourth grade, um, <clears throat> who are now all uh, ninth graders. So it was a while ago. <laughs> all right. Um, you know what? We are going to, for the sake of time, we're going to um, skip this. This is another mixer, another, um, the, the premise of this song is one act leads to another, though we don't always see the way. But that smile you share with your brother or your friend or the stranger or the world is going to change the day. So you can, um, you can totally hear this on, uh, at that YouTube link. And um, again, the premise being that it's a mixer and you use the chorus and you tell the kids as soon as you hear, because one act leads to another, that's your cue to find a partner and dance with them in some creative way. Um, so, I want to, here's another one, great, great mixer, we're not going to hear it, you can hear it at the YouTube, because there's always way more material than time. Um, so, stories, puppet shows, um, they, stories and folk tales are an ancient, ancient, ancient means of communicating lessons that adults wanted to pass on to other adults or the children in their world sitting around those campfires. Um, so I am a huge fan of folk tales. I find there is a folk tale for absolutely every lesson. But as a musician, I have this weird habit of turning folk tales into songs. Um, <clears throat> so I, I, I do, I, I will highlight just one thing here, one bullet point that clearly community building has been something that humans have grappled with for um, a long time because there's so many folk tales about community building and about not ostracizing and about how there's room for everyone and about inclusion. So um, this is not a new issue. However, I'm very hopeful that maybe we can make some progress with it. And we always, we are always making progress. Um, Okay, so this is a folktale that truly exists in just about every culture. And I'm sure, um, I, I, I'm sure many of you know this story. Um, it, you know, sometimes it's the giant turnip. There's a Halloween version. There's a wonderful Halloween version about the um, giant pumpkin. Um, so there's <clears throat> lots of different versions that express the different cultures uh, by virtue of what vegetable it is that is uh, tricky to pull out. And that in itself is a fantastic learning for kids to learn about the different versions that have come from different parts of the world. This one is my version of the Israeli version, and the Israeli version is based on the Russian version. <laughs> so it's grandfather and the giant carrot. All right. So um, everybody put your beard on for grandfather. Okay. Grandfather planted a carrot in his garden. He watered it carefully. He fretted and he muttered and he weeded and he puttered. Then he let that carrot be. And it grew and it grew and it grew and it grew till it was so big that grandfather knew that he'd never get it out. But I say he was stubborn in the good way. He wouldn't give up. All right, everybody pretend you're pulling. He pulled and he pulled and he pulled and he pulled, but nothing helped. That carrot wouldn't move. So grandfather called to grandmother, come help me if you please. Our carrot is huge and I just can't move it, but with your help I'll do it with ease. So grandfather and grandmother, they pulled and they pulled and they pulled and they pulled, but nothing helped. That carrot would not move. And so we go on to Mama, who has big earrings. When it gets to me, Mama called me, we pointed ourselves. Let me move us up to the next. Um, then I call to 
<sighs> Dropping things here. I call to Ranger the dog. Ranger the dog calls to Whiskers the cat, which in itself is something to discuss. Okay. Ra um, Whiskers the cat calls to Squeaky the mouse. So at the end, so grandfather and grandmother and mama and me and ranger the dog and whiskers the cat and squeaky the mouse we pulled and we pulled and we pulled and we pulled and this time it worked that great carrot moved down came grandfather, down came grandmother, down came mama, down came me, down came ranger, down came whiskers, down came squeaky, and the carrot was free. And we took it home and we had carrot bread and carrot soup and carrot salad and carrot muffins and carrot ice cream and everything else carrot. So that is a um, wonderful story to dramatize. I don't know how many of you use that, but um, you get the kids up. And so, of course, you have the kids who might not play together, but are in this play together. Um, and that, you know, is another way of creating bonds and communication. I'm going to do one more story um, just because I love this story so much and then we are going to have time for um, comments and questions. There are a whole bunch more stories in the um, in the PowerPoint. I'll show you when we're done with this one but this I always present to kids as um, have you ever noticed that people argue a lot? And um, usually, what are people arguing about? They are arguing <clears throat> um, about, the, you know, I think most arguments kind of boil down to, I'm right and you're wrong. And the other person, of course, is saying, no, 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 I'm right and you're wrong, okay? and. I present this story. This comes from a beautiful book called Who Took the Farmer's Hat? And Susan, you know that book? Okay. Um, so <clears throat> I always present this as, you know, sometimes it's not that the other person's wrong. It's that they are seeing something differently than what we're seeing. So everybody clap or snap or tap your feet or move your body, whatever you need to do now. We've been sitting for a long time. Well, Farmer Brown had an old brown hat, an old brown hat, an old brown hat. Yes, Farmer Brown had an old brown hat until the wind blew it away. So Farmer Brown went to look for her hat. She went to look for her hat. She went to look for her hat. Farmer Brown went to look for her hat. She couldn't find it, though she looked all day. So Farmer Brown asked the little goat, Have you seen my hat? Have you seen my hat? No, said little goat, I haven't seen your hat. I saw a tasty flower pot but it blew away. At which point I say to the kids, well, now wait a minute. Had the goat seen the hat? And the goat had seen the hat, but the goat didn't know it was a hat. And they all go, no, the goat thought it was a flower pot and that's wrong. And I'm like, but wait, couldn't, couldn't a hat be a flower pot? It could be. We could plant something in a hat. And then you see the light bulbs going, oh, so Farmer Brown asked the little duck, Have you seen my hat? Have you seen my hat? No, said little duck, I haven't seen your hat. I saw a strange brown boat, but it blew away. 
So Farmer Brown asked the little fly, Have you seen my hat? Have you seen my hat? No, said little fly, I haven't seen your hat. I saw a strange brown hill, but it blew away. And of course, to a fly, a hat could look like a hill. So Farmer Brown asked the little mouse, and just note to anybody who might want to buy this puppet, do not leave it out on your desk in the middle of the night if you have insomnia and you come into your office because you might think, like me, it's a real mouse. Okay, so Farmer Brown asked the little mouse, have you seen my hat? Have you seen my hat? And I asked the kids, what do you think the mouse thought it was? And by this time they all go, a house! No, said little mouse, I haven't seen your hat. I saw a big mouse hole, but it blew away. So Farmer Brown asked the little bird, Have you seen my hat? Have you seen my hat? No, said little bird, I haven't seen your hat, but I found a great new nest to lay my eggs. Well, Farmer Brown looked at Little Bird's Nest, looked a lot like her hat, looked a lot like her hat. Farmer Brown looked at Little Bird's Nest and said, what a great place to lay your eggs. So, Farmer Brown found another hat, another hat, Another hat, yes, Farmer Brown found another hat and made sure the wind didn't blow it away. The end. <laughs> so, I mean, endless conversations with kids about not humiliating someone if they've made a mistake, not fighting with someone, explaining, do you always have to give away your hat and get another one? Of course not. You could possibly explain to the bird that you need your hat. Lots of endless discussion from this one. And I love the book too. I know I, I don't even remember now, I know I changed some of the animals that were in the book. Um, hang on. So this is another great story about seeing things from different perspectives. The YouTube link is how I do it with a whiteboard and adding the different parts. But, um, you know, the book is fantastic too. This um, is a great old, I mean, this is directly about racism. This is directly about bias. This is directly about othering. And it is um, an old... German folktale, um, and um, I put in those names of butterflies, so, you know, I've kind of made it my own, um, but I do this with puppets as well. Um, come on, oops, sorry, um, yeah, okay, uh, the story of stone soup. Um, obviously, sometimes the story of stone soup is presented as though the soldier or the person coming into town was a con artist and was tricking everybody. Um, I don't present it that way. I see it as a community builder and that he had found a way to get people talking to each other and get them out of their house and get them out of their isolation. So um, you can hear my version of it on that link. This is um, a wonderful song. We don't have time. Um, but another just direct story to share with kids. And Wayne is a friend of mine, and um, his you can hear it here on the um, this YouTube link. And this is a beautiful song, also just about racism and, and bias. Um, another beautiful one. And, and these, you know, they're written pretty much in the way that I tell them, obviously without the acting. <laughs> but... Um, all songs that so, stories um, book list okay I am a um, book hoarder if I turned my camera you would see an office just overrun with books and I'm forever trying to stick to the shelves I have and it never works um, so these are a whole list of 
picture books that I find in some way relates to building kind communities, building justice communities, um, anti-bullying, anti-racism. Um, you'll see in this list um, I have uh, books that are specific about neurodiversity, so kids on the autism spectrum, on the Asperger's, um, uh, kids with learning disabilities, and then a whole lot about uh, difference of skin color. And uh, I mentioned it yesterday, and I'll highlight it again, my forever favorite book about modeling teaching um, called Chrysanthemum by Kevin Hanks. And um, yeah, and that's my contact information. So let's stop the screen share. I see a whole bunch of chats, anything. Yes, I do, Ruth. Um, Thank you for mentioning that because I'm so bad about self-promotion. <laughs> but um, this is a CD called Rainbow of Color. Um, you can go to my website and that will, um, well, interesting. You can go to my website and order it from me. <laughs> um, it used to be on CD Baby and um, uh, CD Baby just changed things. So you can find it on Amazon. Um, but you can also just get it from me. The other thing I will promote, because I'm so proud of it, is um, this is my book, my picture book version of that song, The Name of the Game. And it was not smart marketing to call it something else, but, you know, what can I do? Um, so it's called We Can Get Along, and it's pictures to go with, every one of the verses and I know that um, all of you as educators I'm sure are very aware of how important picture books that have representation of absolutely everyone in our world are as opposed to those years and years and years of wonderful stories with pictures that just showed Caucasian kids. Um, so I just wish, you know, somebody would take on as a project taking all those old incredible stories and illustrating them to a more inclusive world. Um, but I'm a musician, not an illustrator. So, <laughs> so does anybody have any last questions, any thoughts, anything you would like to um, share? Um, I will say that we are going to put together the recording of today's presentation. Um, Joni will also give me a PDF of the PowerPoint that we with will corrections send, with corrections that we will send out. <laughs> I um, have to edit things four times apparently. <laughs> but it's fine. We could never stop editing. Yes. Um, and then with that email, I will also send out information again about how to register for contact hours should you need them through. Um, the OC, I never can remember how many letters. O-C-C-R-R-A. -R -R R-R-A website. Um, I also plug this Saturday, so tomorrow morning, I believe it's from 10 to 11, check our Eventbrite. Um, we are having our live stream Real Abilities Film Festival. It's a children's stop motion animation feature. So it's, I think, three or four small short films. Um, you can watch them at any time in that 24 hours, but we're going to release the, um, the links and the codes tomorrow around 10 a.m. And then after that, we will have a special link to a YouTube video of another one of our wonderful teaching artists, Kate Amuller, who is going to show how to make stop motion clay puppets with oh. their really cool videos. So I want to plug that. Um, check out our website, check out our Facebook, Instagram, all that good stuff, and um, be looking for an email from us coming out e either today or tomorrow morning, with um, depending on how long it takes the recording to compress, with the recording and the handouts. So Molly, um, uh, I know Ruth said she hadn't gotten yesterday's handout yet, so I'm not okay. sure if she's... I sent it out this morning. Um... I haven't gotten it either. Okay. So it's possible that everybody that signed up through Okra might not, might have, not have gotten it. So yeah. do you want to maybe post in the chat the info at Art Possible email? Yes. 
And email. so anyone who um, signed up through Okra, make sure to email Molly with your contact information so you can get um, all of those handouts. And then I will be going uh, back into Okra uh, by Monday to get all of you your credit. So um, if for some reason you don't get that, make sure you email me so that yeah, because there's just so many <laughs> I know short <laughs> shorts so, out. <laughs> if you still need the links, like any of the information from previous webinars, um, please email me at info at artpossibleohio.org, and mm -hmm. I'll. And then I will just reply and send out the email that went to folks that registered through Eventbrite. So it'll be the exact same email. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. And um, then one last plug is if you work for an agency or a school system that you would like um, to bring me in to do um, this workshop or those of you that were here at Different is Not Dangerous yesterday, similar idea but very different material to use so slightly different focus and then also the workshops I did last week that are more directed at teachers um, which are um, recognizing invisible barriers to learning so any of that please contact me obviously now with zoom we don't have travel costs um, we can do things a little bit um, more directly to your your um, agencies and your schools so if you enjoyed this and you think your colleagues would enjoy it, please reach out to me. Um, and thanks you so much for all of you. I'm gonna I'm gonna miss some of you next week on Thursday morning. This has been a this has been a really fun um, fun time with you guys. And um, Molly, thank you so much for having me thank do you, this. Thank you, Tony. Thank you so much. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye.